Thank you for that applause. I really appreciate it. We'll see if I get some at the end, eh? If I could grant you one wish, I could snap my fingers like that and make that wish come true. Just off the top of your head, what would you wish for? Bearing in mind you're not allowed to wish for a never-ending packet of Tim Tams. <laughs> you're not allowed to wish for 25 more wishes. One wish. You've got to make that wish within 10 seconds or you lose it. Just off the top of your head, what would you wish for? Happiness. Happiness? I think we'll find that on our list. Can we have our... The guys up the back, can we have our PowerPoint? Okay. Um, would anybody have wished for health? Yeah. Yep. Um, somebody else, if you, sat, if you had a few seconds left, what else would you wish for? Yeah. Wealth? What else would you, if you still had a few seconds? Yeah. Happiness, there we had it. Someone talked about total freedom. How many of you got a relationship that's important to you? You know, there's someone you love and you want that to go well. Just hands up. Three of you, okay. <laughs> Talking to a group of politicians in Canberra, which is near where I live, and um, there's about 200 of them in the room. I said, how many of you got a, a, a relationship you want to go well? And they just started looking at each other. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm the guy who says you can have it all. And the reason I say that is I, re I believe, I truly believe, and I've spent 23 years finding this out, I truly believe that you were born successful and that you learn to become unsuccessful. Does that make sense? That a human being in balance will knock all of that stuff off without really having to put in any effort. So really what I want to say to you is this stuff should be going great for you. Now I know that for all of us there's times when it's not. So I'm talking about a generalised sense of well-being and success in all of these fields. But I'm not the only person who says that. You know, we've been training people in how to get this, as I said, for 23 years. And yeah, it's true that I've got to go and give this message to the McDonald's owners next week in Perth. 450 business owners. Some of those people own 20 Maccas and we've got to shape them up because they succeed in some of these areas and not in others. Weird, isn't it? How'd you like to own 20 Maccas? Not, not the burgers. <laughs> And so they can own up to 20 franchises and yet they've got us come in because they're getting out of balance because, as they said to me in the briefing, the problem is these guys are getting fat and rich and lazy and their relationships are coming undone and their health is going to the pack. So success is more than just being able to make more money than you can spend. And really, financial success revolves around can you make more money than can you spend? Does that make sense? Now, how many of you are highly talented in the I can spend it department? <laughs> okay, so we've just got to get the other bit happening. So I'm not the only person who says you can have it all. I want to introduce you to some of our clients. Here's a mate of mine called Bob. He turned up as a client. Now, I'm going to call him Pete so you don't know his name's Bob. <laughs> but when he, when he turned up to see us, he'd, um, he, he was failing to recover from a bowel cancer operation. And the doctors had said to him, you need some help with your head. And somehow he got in contact with us and we had a chat and away he went. And uh, that was just on 15 years ago. And he's alive and well today and extraordinarily successful. In fact, you might have heard me talk about him the other day. Because uh, when we got involved with him, his business, his business had plateaued at 20 million bucks a year. So I was turning over 20 million, but had been doing that for a while. And he's having extreme difficulty getting it to punch past that. But we'd helped him with the cancer. Yeah. And he said, I believe you're that good. We're prepared to talk about being involved with you financially, see what you can do. And so we rode that roller coaster, and it was a pretty exciting thing. The stress had got to him. He was 130 kilos. I don't know, how many of you have been up there? Because, you know, it's one heck of a place to be. You're yeah, still there? <laughs> OK, see me later. <laughs> So the stress had got to him and he just ballooned up. He got himself down to 90 kilos, just using the stuff that I want to talk to you about today. One of the other ways he was handling the stress was that he had 25 shops. He would just call in at a shop and just empty the till and go to the track and gamble it. And I've been with him at the track watching what goes on. And I've seen him with like forty or $50,000 cash in his pocket, still not happy. 
the business fell over because it was a tragic, tragic divorce. I won't bore you with the details, but it was, I say it was tragic because it was ugly. How many of you have been involved in a, in a divorce that was relatively okay? Did any of you get through that? Yeah. Well, then there's the ugly ones. Well, his was an ugly one because they had to unravel this business. And so um, at 54 years old, he rang me and he said, mate, he said, I'm stuffed. He said, I'm lonely. I've got plenty of money. I'm lonely. And I want to be in a relationship, but at 54 years old, I live on a 200-acre farm at the back of Kempsey in New South Wales. He said, how am I ever going to find someone? I said, mate, I promise you, the right woman will knock on your door. And you know she did? She did. I said, all you've got to do is hold a faith. All you've got to do is turn yourself into the man who would be the right match for her when she turns up. Your job now is to get ready so that when she turns up, she doesn't walk past you and go to the next place. Does that make sense? And so he got involved with that. Him and his new wife, who he's still desperately in love with, and by the way, she's 20 years younger than him, bit of a spunk. <laughs> Isn't it funny how that happens? <laughs> Him and his new wife moved to Brisbane, started a brand new business in a completely different industry three years ago, and it's running at 25 million bucks a year right now. And we're still employed by him, working with the people in his company. And um, I've, I've asked him to do an interview, you know, it's not surprising that you hear about interviews. I've asked him to do an interview, and what that guy has to say is absolute gold, because he works about one-tenth of the time that he did in the first business. So can you have it all? Absolutely. How I many of you believe that? You can. You can have it all. You can. you just got to know how. And I guess that's what we spent the last 23 years doing, is perfecting the systems that allow you to deliver that. But Pete's not the only one. Here's a girl we'll call Amanda. Uh, single mother of four kids under 10. My first question for her was, have you found out what's causing it? <laughs> she said, you know, this is pretty weird. I've actually got an issue with sex. And because of that, I hold out a lot. Sex for me is not a good thing. And that makes my husband anxious, and therefore, sex is never under the right conditions. And so we've ended up with a bunch of kids. She's a university lecturer, and what happened was a student of hers wasn't happy with the result that she got. She got attacked on the way out of work to her car. Found herself unable to go back to work. Came to see us. I said the same thing to her, get yourself right and a perfect partner will turn up and he did. And she says to me now, Paul, she said, I never knew I was a nymphomaniac. <laughs> but that's how she talks about it nowadays. The first session I had with her, we sat down, I had a phone that was the colour of a Cadbury's wrapper. And I didn't know and I whacked it on the table, made a big deal about turning it off so she knew that I was paying attention to her. She started to shake. I said, what's up? She said, can you get the chocolate off the table? <laughs> I said, it's my phone. She said, no, it's not, it's chocolate. <laughs> a, a kilo of chocolate a day. Pretty awesome concept. And, and she was that weight. She wasn't fat. She was burning it up, nervous energy. And uh, she, with, because of four kids, she doesn't have time to work. So I said to her, what do you like to do? She said, I reckon I'm pretty good at, you know, I can see the potential in things, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so she earns a living now buying properties, renovating them. She, obviously, she doesn't pick up a hammer and chisel herself, um, but she makes a very handsome living, about 150 grand a year. Uh, she just buys them, fixes them, sells them, moves them on, that allows her to be with the kids. Uh, here's my mate, Jason, and I'll tell you his real name, it's Jason. <laughs> and uh, I think in that photograph, Jason is about 154 kilos. And he went from 154 kilos to 90 kilos in six months. Does that sound pretty spectacular? It ought to. That's a lot of weight. When I met him, he was uh, just recovering. He'd actually stopped himself. He'd got himself off the drugs. He'd kicked a 15-year drug habit. Still, still clean today and absolutely vibrantly healthy. He found and married his soulmate. And his earnings, have a, have a go at that. Can you have it all? You can. That's pretty awesome, isn't it? So you can get to the gym while you're building a business. 